that I came in ready to praise the Lord tonight. Oh, come on, put those hands together.
Just right where we're at. Just begin to lift your hands and let's worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Just surrender everything that you have tonight.
want to love you more. I want to love you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to love you more. I want to love you more. I surrender. And just right there, as you say in that same spirit of worship, as, as you begin to lift your hands and as you begin to cry out to God and surrender everything that you have to Him tonight, Whatever burdens you might have came in with, any worries, any anxieties, the burden of keep, you keep praying for our for our loved ones, you know, just continue to lift them up in prayer. You know, we have some prayer requests here in the body. We want to lift up Francisca Oliva, Michael Ortiz, and Paul Ortiz. And I just pray that right there, just begin to lift up your loved ones that, that might not know Christ or that might be struggling with something, depression, suicide. Speaking, you never know what a person carries in their hearts or in their minds, and you never know the burdens that they have that, that they don't share with anyone, but you might be the only person that prays for them and intercedes for them on their behalf. Father God, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God, again for another night. Another day, Lord, that you fill us with your breath, God, to be able to come here into your house, God, to praise and to worship you, God. We lift up all of our needs to you, Lord, and you know each and every single person's need here tonight, God. Whether they say it or not, God, you know what's on their shoulders. You know the burdens they carry. You know the, you know the loved ones that they continue to pray for, God. And I just pray, God, that none of us here get tired of praying for our loved ones, God, that, that you would give us strength to continue to, to pursue them in prayer, God, to continue to lift them up, God, that we would not surrender or, or shrink back, Lord, but that we would continue to be in consistent prayer for our loved ones, God, in our city, our co-workers, our students, whoever it might be, God, that we lift up in prayer to you, Lord. We lift up those that are sick in body, Lord, whether it be from any church, God, whether it be our co-workers, our friends, our family members, God, we lift them up. And you know those people that are sick, God, we just pray that you would bring a healing, God, and that you would bring a hedge of protection over each and every single person here, God, that your, that your blood would cover each and every one of us here, Lord, and that you would keep us from getting sick, God, and, and if we do get sick, that you would lift us back up to health again, Lord. And again, we pray, Lord, that you would be with Pastor Mario tonight, God, as, he, as you use him to speak your word to us, that you would prepare our hearts and our minds and our ears, God, and that you would remove any distractions and just remove any spirit that's not of you here, Lord, and just fill it with your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you and we love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and the body of Christ says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus Christ a radical hand of praise tonight. At this time, you guys may have your seats. You know, as we prepare our hearts to give our tithes and our offering, you know, I just have a portion of scripture I want to share with you guys. It's found in um, Psalms chapter 4, verse 5. And it says, Offer righteous sacrifices. Trust confidently in the Lord. You know, and as we're here together, and you know, just remember that everything that God's done in your life, from having the breath in your lungs to the clothes that you wear to to the strength and the opportunities that God gives you to go to work, you know, count it all a blessing. And tonight, you know, as when we give our tithes and our offering, we're doing it out of obedience, out of out of bring, out of respect for the Lord and giving what belongs to Him. You know, and as we search our hearts tonight, you know, like do we hold on to the blessings more than we do to the Word of God and to having a heart that honors Him to bring glory and to be an example of what it's like to be a good steward with everything that he's given us? Or do we hold on and idolize the blessings and, and the careers and the jobs and the things that he's allowed us to have? And I, just, I just encourage you guys to give with all your heart. And if you don't have anything to give tonight, I pray that you just give all your heart, all your mind, and all your attention tonight. There's a couple of ways we can give. You know, you got your QR code or you can do it the old-fashioned way and fill out the envelope and drop it off at the basket at the end of service um, 
God bless you guys. excited to be in the house of God. Amen? No better place to be than in the house of the Lord. We just want to welcome you once again. Amen? And I have some announcements for you. I want to let you know what's taking place in the house of God, starting with tomorrow. Amen? Tomorrow we have our hour of power where we gather together for an hour of prayer. Amen? We meet here at the church at 6 p.m. and we pray for one hour, amen. You can come in, you can pray for 10 minutes, you can pray for 30 minutes, you can pray for an hour. We just have the church open at 6 p.m. to 7, 8, 7 p.m. So that way we can pray, amen. We just see God moving in our prayers, amen. So I want to encourage you, make sure that you come out for Hour of Power. That's tomorrow night. And then also on Friday night, amen. Friday night is where it's at, praise God. Because how many know that the gang has life group on Friday nights at 7 p.m.? They have the Movement Life Group, which is with Brother Lalo and Sister Chelsea at their house. Amen. And that's for all the young adults. And then we also have the Awaken Life Group. That's for any students. If you're in junior high or high school, amen. And that's that's with Brother Rigo and Sister Miranda, amen, right there at 3... 321 Sunset Drive, praise God, in LaSalle, amen. So I want to encourage you, if you know any young people, make sure you get them connected to the life groups. They have a great time in the Lord, praise God. And then also, this Friday is a little different because this Friday, we have some people that are, the life groups are going to take place. They're going to still be there, amen. But this Friday, we're going to have some other people join in here at the church at 6 p.m. to get ready for our Thanksgiving giveaway, amen, so that way we can give to the community, amen. We're going to give out some gloves and some hats and a sack lunch, amen, for the homeless. So we encourage you, amen, make sure that you come if you want to help prepare bags and put them together, amen. That's at 6 p.m. on Friday night, and that'll be upstairs, praise God. So make sure that you come and join us for that. And then also, that leads up to Saturday, which we have the opportunity to give out, amen. We can give back to our community and, and those that are homeless during this season, amen. So I want to encourage you, that's going to be at 1 p.m. on Saturday. We're going to be over here in front of the church. We're just going to be giving out to anybody that shows up, amen. We're going to be giving them the lunch and the stuff that we put together the day before, the gloves and the hats, amen. But also, amen, it is that time of season, praise God, where we get to put up a 12-foot Christmas tree on that side, and a 12-foot Christmas tree on that side, and a Christmas tree out there, and a Christmas tree over here, and all kinds of Christmas trees, amen. So we decorate on Saturday, praise God. So we need a lot of help to come out on Saturday. That's at 10 a.m., amen. We're going to start decorating, and we encourage you to come out. I believe there's usually hot chocolate, amen, that we are able to sit there and partake while we're doing some work, praise God. So I want to encourage you, make sure you come out for that. It's going to be a great time. Hallelujah. And then also Sunday morning. Amen. Make sure you register for a Sunday morning service. We've been packing out on our Sunday morning service, so we're going to change things up a little bit. Amen. We have heard. We have heard the cry of our city and our community. Amen. And, and how many know you want to praise and worship God? But how many know sometimes it's hard when you can't see the words? Praise Lord. So we're going to turn the screens, amen. We're going to turn the screens, amen. So make sure you register. You're going to see something a little different, amen, because we got to turn the screen so that way everybody can be a part, amen, and everybody can be able to praise and worship our Lord, amen. So that's Sunday morning. And then Monday, praise God, we have the Women in Action Life group, amen. So make sure that's with Sister Dana right here at the church. Make sure you get connected. Tuesday night, amen, is the Warring Saints, the men's life group, amen. Praise God. You can see Brother Ben if you have any questions about that. And then as we all stand, 
Tuesday night, we have God's anointed now generation. They have their service every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Amen. Just a powerful time. Praise God where we can gather together. And then also we have the Mighty Men of Valor conference that's going to be coming up live. Amen. We're going to be able to stream it live. Amen. That's going to be coming up here in about a week and a half. So I want to encourage you, stay connected. Make sure you're a part. You don't want to miss out. Amen. And then right there where you're at, we're going to pray for this evening's tithes and offering. And I want to encourage you, amen, if you have tithes and offering, we can drop it off on our way out, amen, in the basket on our way out, or you can do the QR code to scan, amen. And uh, But we're going to lift up our offering if we have it this evening. Lift it up to the Lord. Father, we come before you, Lord God. We worship you and praise you. We just thank you for the opportunity to give back to you, Lord God. We're grateful, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would continue to stretch and multiply, Lord God, every offering and every tithe that comes in, Lord God, that you would continue to use it, Father God, to further your kingdom, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you would get all the honor, that you would get all the glory from our lives, Lord God, that you would just continue to have your way. Bless every giver this evening, Lord. We worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you, just begin to lift your hands. We're going to close out a series. Thankful or thankless. And I just want to encourage you, begin to lift up your hands. I truly believe God is going to take us to another level tonight. Another level of faith. Another level of gratitude to Him. Have your way in this place, Lord God. We worship you and praise you. Amen. Just begin to lift your hands, church. This morning we're gonna, or this afternoon we're gonna sing. God, my life is not my own. I give it all to you. Church, if you want to dedicate your life tonight, if you want to give everything that you've ever loved, everything that you've ever dreamed of, and let it, ha let God have control. Just begin to lift your hands and sing this with us.
praise you. Have your way in this place, Lord. Have your way, Father God. Hallelujah. I don't know if you were listening to the words of that song. I remember this song from when sometime back when I was sitting there and I didn't know whether I was going to answer the call that was upon my life or not. I just want to make an altar call right now. I remember where I was when I was sitting there crying out to God, Lord, I give myself away. Lord, I give my life to you, Lord. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me, Lord God. I give my life to you, Lord. If you want to use me, use me, Lord God. I truly believe that God has taken us to a place. God has taken us to another level. He wants to do something great within your lives. He wants to use you like never before. We're going to sing that one more time. As you sing these songs, really, as you sing these words, really begin to listen to what they say. Really begin to listen to what they mean. Lord, I give myself away. He can't use you. He can't use you when you're in control of your own life. He can't use you when you want to be in control. He can't use you when you think you have all the answers. Oh, Lord, I give it all away so you can use me, Lord. place, Father God. We'll give you all the honor. We'll give you all the glory, Lord God, that you would just move within your house, Lord. Have your way. If you want to give your life away, give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. If you're ready to declare tonight, my life is not my own, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Give the worship team a hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we do that song, I Give My Life Away for Altar Call? Amen. Praise God. God's always in control. <laughs> Little do you know how these songs tie into the messages. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5, we're going to continue our, ser our series, Thankful or Thankless. We got some thankful Christians in the house. Uh. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, every morning I wake up, I'm grateful. I know there was times where I thought I was going to wake up dead. There's times that I thought I was going to wake up divorced. There was times I thought I was going to wake up locked up. Amen. There was times I thought I was going to wake up on the side of the road. So every time I wake up, I got to thank God that I'm alive and that I'm in my bed. Praise God. In my house. Hallelujah. May not, may not be our house, but praise God. We're living there. Praise God. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse 18. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, I'm reading out the Amplified. 
in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, tell your neighbor, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we come before you, Lord God. We worship you and praise you, Lord. We just pray that you would continue to move, Lord God, with any service we have, Lord God, that you would move in this service, Lord. We pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that I would decrease, that you would increase, that you would touch my lips, Lord God, that your word would go forth and not that of my own, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit, Father, that you would have control, that you would have dominion of this house, that you would be able to move freely, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you would get all the honor, that you would get all the glory. Have your way. Open up our minds, our hearts, our ears to receive every everything that you have for us tonight, Lord God, that we leave this place thankful and grateful, Lord God, that we serve the one living true God, Father. We pray you have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You may have your seats this evening. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I begin to get in the Word of God, and we've been going over this thankful or thank less, and I, I get a little more stirred up, and the more I read, and the more I, I study, the more I begin to sit there and realize how much we have to be thankful for. I even look, and I see how God's been moving in our church. And I sit there and I'm amazed at what God's doing and I'm amazed how God's working and I'm excited to see everything that he's doing, everything he puts his hands to. And I see how everything's coming together and I get excited for how God's beginning to do, continue a great work. Amen? Amen. He's not doing a new work, praise God. He started a new work a while back. Amen? He's continuing to do a great work. Amen. I even look, we got, amen, hallelujah, hello everybody on YouTube and Facebook. We got our cameras up and running, amen. We had all the guys that were here working hard and, and helping us build the things. They're all built and sprayed and textured and, and solid, amen. He's not falling through the floor, amen. He's back there on a tripod, amen. Very soon we'll have another camera going, amen. But God's been faithful. God has been faithful. And I just sit here amazed how good God is. And we continue this series, Thankful or Thankless. And I don't know where you're at tonight, but sometimes I wonder as Christians, do we get a little thankless in our lives? Do we sit there and go through our day and not thank God for that day? Do we go through our week and not give thanks to God for that week? Do we sit there and get caught up in our circumstances, like that scripture said, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful, for that is God's will. That is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus, that we'd be men and women that are thankful, that we'd be men and women that are grateful. The question is, though, is how do we live our lives? Do we truly live thankful lives, or do we live thankless lives? Are we truly laying down our lives like that song said, I give my life to you? Are we truly laying down our lives for Christ? Are we trying to pick our lives back up? I know that's one thing that we struggle with in this time. Amen. We like to pick up our lives and we like to put it together. We're like, oh, I got this all figured out now. I have everything worked out now. I know what I'm doing now. I got my right mind back about me. And we sit there and we get a little caught up sometimes. And we sit there and we get, begin to try to put the pieces back together. But how many know there's only one that's in control? There's only one sovereign God that knows everything. There's only one all-knowing God. He knows where the pieces of the puzzle go. And I look at this and we get so concerned in our lives with what we want. We get so concerned with what our desires are. We get so concerned or so focused on what we're longing for or what will make us happy. We begin to sit there and get in our minds, man, I need this and I need to do this and I need to get this done and I have to have this. In order to have a successful life or a productive life, I have to begin to sit there and do certain things within my life or else I'm not making it. We have this mentality in this mind that we know what we need. But I really began to see something because here was Paul and he was writing and he's telling us that we're supposed to be thankful. Paul was a man that laid down his life. Amen. Paul was a man that went through some circumstances. Amen. He says in there, he says, in every situation, no matter, no matter what the circumstances in the Amplified, be thankful. 
Paul's sitting there and says, no, in every situation that you go through, no matter what you're going through, whether it's good or bad, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. Now, I don't know how much you know about Paul, but there's a portion of Scripture found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 29, and I'm going to read it all. Because Paul was writing, and he had to shed a little light on some things that were taking place in his life. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 through 29. It reads like this. It says, five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Lord, Hallelujah. He didn't just get one lashing. Amen. How many of you know today, today in Christianity, amen, we get one lashing, we're done. We throw in our towel, we're like, I'm going home. <laughs> Pastor doesn't love me, amen? Sister Diana doesn't love me. My leaders don't love me, amen? We get one little lashing and we're done. But Paul was here and he said, I got 39 lashes. Then he says, three times I was beaten with rods. Well, you ever got beaten with a bat before? Huh. <laughs> Praise God. How many know in victory hours, someone's like, I got to say, yeah, I've been there, amen. That's me, praise God. Paul says, three times I was beaten with rods. Remember this, Paul was here, and for the sake of Jesus Christ, he was beaten 39, he took 39 lashes, he was beaten with the rod three times, he said, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I have spent adrift on the sea. Many times on journeys, I was exposed to danger from rivers, dangers from bandits, dangers from my own countrymen. Oh, I was in danger from my own people. Well, just in case you ever wonder if you're like, you're one of those people. You want to give up on Christianity. You want to give up on Jesus Christ. Paul says, I was in danger by my own people. Hey, Amen. You're like, oh, the church is against me, and my brother's against me, and my sister's against me, and they don't want to help me, and, they want to, and we go on with our little pity parties. Hey, Amen. That ain't the type of guy Paul was. Paul sat there and said, man, my own countrymen were against me. I was in danger from the Gentiles. I was in danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger on the sea. He said, there was no, he didn't say this in the Bible, but he's basically saying, man, I was in danger on the sea. I was in danger in the wilderness. I was in danger in the city. There was no place that I could escape. Everywhere I went, I was in danger. He named it all. I look at Paul and I'm like, man, here was a man that went through some stuff. Danger among those posing as believers. He said, I was in danger among those that were posing as believers. Wow. Well, let that one speak to you, amen? In labor and hardship, often able, unable to sleep, in hunger and thirst, often driven to fasting, well, read it and amplify it. This gets good. He says, I was often driven to fasting for lack of food. Well, we get all sad when we ain't got nothing to eat. Amen? Paul sat there and looked at it as an opportunity to fast. We get all hurt. Uh, nobody wants to help me out. Nobody wants to give me a handout. Nobody wants, they say they're my brothers and sisters and they won't even buy a brother a meal. Maybe you get your focus right. Maybe you get your focus right and just begin to sit there and be like, maybe this is an opportunity. God wants you to fast. Maybe you don't need nothing. Amen. In cold and exposure without adequate clothing. Besides those external things, there is the daily inescapable pressure of my concern for all the churches who is weak, and I do not feel his weakness. Who is made to sin? I am not on fire with sorrow and concern. Paul was here and he lays it all out. 
he lays it all out and says, man, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your situation, but I know the God that I serve, and I know that he is going forward. I know that he's going to continue to move. I know that he went through far, far worse than I went through, so I can continue to push forward, and I can continue to live for him, and I can t- continue to give my all to him. Amen. He laid down his life for me. I can lay down my life for him. I look at this and I begin to see some things because we want to call ourselves disciples today. But I truly don't know if we're disciples like Jesus had. Like, oh, pastor, why are you being so harsh? The reality is, is uh, you read your Bible as you read your Bible, you begin to learn some stuff. As you begin to study, you begin to learn some stuff. There were some true disciples back in the day. There were true disciples that were willing to lay down their lives. The problem is we have too many Christians that are trying to pick up their lives and try to put things back together. You have men and women of God that were living their lives and they were laying down their lives. They were doing everything they could for the gospel. They were doing everything they could for Jesus Christ. And they continue to go forward and they continue to live their lives sold out for Jesus Christ. And they weren't going to draw back. They weren't going to go backwards. They weren't going to go to the side. Amen. They were just going to keep going forward. Irregardless of what faced them and the many trials that they faced, they continue to push forward. That's why we're here today because there was men that rose up and they continue to push forward. Even though everything was against them we want to live a glorified man praise God I don't even know what they call it anymore are you a raw disciple are you a bedazzled disciple hey man Paul was sitting here he's like man I was in hunger he said I was in the cold I was exposed without no adequate clothing. Man, I I went through some stuff. I was in, I had to sit there and go through labor and hardship. I had to go through hard times. He said, man, I I went through some stuff. The disciples went through some stuff. The disciples had to work, amen. Now we live in a time where Christians just want to be all, amen, praise God. They're more concerned about their manicures and their facials and their, I don't know what it's called. Praise God. When you get your all your face all done, you go to the barber shop, amen, and they line you up on the front, and they come through and they do your eyebrows, and they even come through and they shave your face, and, and they shave these little hairs that are right here by your eyes, and they do all this extra stuff for you, amen. That's the Christianity that we live in today. We want everything. We want to, oh, man, praise God. Look, at, there's not a bunch of chairs here. Praise the Lord. We want to, we, we walk into our churches. We walk into the house of God and we want to be treated like we're going to a spa. It's like, man, we want us to be, come in here and be pampered. Oh, can I get my nails done? And I'm just talking about the guys. I'm not even talking about the girls. Amen. <laughs> girls, you continue to get your nails done. Praise God. Guys. Amen. You own more tweezers than I own shavers, praise God. But we want to be all pampered, and we want to get our facials, and we want to get our hands all nice and smooth, and we want to do all this stuff, and we just want to sit back and relax in that little lounge, in that little massage chair. I think it's a massage chair. You want to sit back in that little massage chair with your feet up and just chill, and, oh, I want to receive, I want to receive, I want to receive. How many of you know that the disciples in the New Testament weren't about receiving and receiving and receiving? The disciples in the New Testament were about laying down their lives and laying down their lives and laying down their lives, giving everything to Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm going to read some stuff to you. Watch this. The disciples were martyred and imprisoned for their faith. The disciple John was sent to Patmos, we know, as a prisoner. Stephen, we read in the Bible, was martyred. And this is according to studies, and and you begin to get in there, and you begin to study, and they show different things of what happened to some of the disciples. Stephen was martyred. 
James, the son of Zebedee, was martyred. James, the brother of Jesus, was martyred. Simon Peter was martyred. Paul the apostle was martyred. Andrew the apostle was martyred. Matthew the apostle was martyred. Philip the apostle was martyred. Thomas the apostle was martyred. Jude, Thaddeus was martyred. Bartholomew was martyred. Barnabas was martyred. Simon the Zealots was martyred. Mark the evangelist was martyred. Timothy was martyred. Philemon was martyred. Antipas was martyred. All these men that you read about in the Bible, men that were willing to lay down their lives, they were all mart martyred for their belief and their faith in Jesus Christ. They were willing to lay down their lives for what they believed in. I look at this today and I'm like, man, I wonder if... I have a pretty extensive imagination, amen? I'm sitting there like, man, I wonder if all these men are up in heaven looking at us as Christians today, and if they could, be like, you guys wouldn't have made it. You guys wouldn't have made it. They're like the OGs, amen? You guys are too soft. You guys ain't got no heart, amen? You guys are all... You guys look really good. You guys look really good. You're really done up nice. Your clothes are all pressed nice, and your shoes are all polished, and your hair's all done right, and oh man, you got the best fade, amen. Too bad it's like your Christianity and it's just fading away. That's the problem. That is the problem with Christianity today. So those that don't know, amen. Find a brother with a fade, amen? One thing about a fade. When you go to a barber, you can ask any guy that gets a fade, amen? You go to a barber, unless you're not paying for it, and then you don't complain. Praise God. They don't pay for it, and they still complain. Praise God. But you go to a barber, and you go to get a fade, amen? And you walk in there, and he's cutting, he's doing the fade, and, and he's cutting your hair. If you see a line in your head, you sit there, and you say, you know what? There's a line in my head. You can tell when it goes from short to really, like, to longer. You can tell where it's at. And I, I need you to fade that in a little better. You tell him before you leave the seat, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Amen. One guy. Praise God. All you guys better come back bald next week. Praise God. But you're sitting there, and you get a fade, and you're like, man, no, there's a line. I need you to fix this line. I need you to take care of this line. I got a line right here. And you want them to fade it in. You want them to fade it in so that way when someone sees your head, they can't tell where the barber was going and where it was really short to where it's really long. You don't want nobody to be able to see the line where it's created. You know, that's the problem when we fade away is you never see the line where you were first fading away. You never see exactly where it went wrong. You never see exactly what was taking place. All of a sudden, you go little by little by little, and then all, before you know it, you're lost, and you're like, man, how did I get here? We don't know. We don't understand. And we go back, and we try to look at it and see where it's at, and sometimes we can find it. But most times, we don't even recognize where it first, first began. A lot of times, it started way before we even thought it started way before, before that first time we drank, amen? Wow. The first time you drank isn't when you fell, isn't when you started fading away from the Lord. It started way before that. There was a condition that started happening in our hearts a long time ago. And that's where we begin to sit there and we begin to get off course. We ain't laying down our lives. We begin to pick things back up and live our lives for ourselves. I look at these men that laid down their lives... They laid it down. They weren't afraid. They were men that were there at the very beginning, and they weren't afraid to give their all to Jesus Christ because they were thankful and they were grateful for the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. They were able to see how he went to Calvary. They were able to see. They were able to be a part and experience and hear the stories of the lashings that he took and the beating that he took and the flogging that he took before he went to the cross and how he rose again and how he was there. They were able to sit there and say, you know what? If God can do that for me, then I can do it for him. If Jesus will lay down his life for me, then I'll lay my life down for him. Amen. Then that's why you get people like Simon Peter that says, I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy to be crucified like my Lord and my Savior. Crucify me upside down. 
because they understood and they knew what Christ did for them. Sometimes I wonder if the church is so far removed from those days that we begin to sit there and think it's about us. Salvation is all about me. Salvation is all about me. And, and, and we make it all about ourselves and getting ourselves right. Man, I don't know about you, but I sit there and I think about the time that I came to Jesus Christ and I begin to think about how he laid his life down for me so that way I may have a hope. He loved me so much that he came down to earth and he was crucified for you and I. How could I ever live my life and not be thankful? How could I ever live my life and not be grateful? It doesn't even matter that he restored my family. That my kids are here and they're serving in the house of God. Amen. That my mom is serving Amen. the Lord. I just sit there amazed and grateful and thankful that a man loved me so much that he went to the cross for me. Even while I was at my worst, even still while I was a sinner, he was willing to believe in me. Amen. I don't know about you, but I began to look at some of those things and, and I see, I was like, man, God, how can I ever become ungrateful? How can I ever become thankless? How could I ever live my life where I'm not in gratitude to you? You did too much for me. And you continue to do stuff for me. And I'm like amazed. Amen. I'm like, man, Lord, does it ever stop? Is it ever enough? I feel more, man, I don't know about you, but I, I have a different mentality when it comes to serving God. I know some of you guys have that same mentality, but I'm like, have you ever had a person that just keeps doing stuff for you? Hey, man, you have a person here in the world that just keeps helping you out. And that's one thing they tell you in business. Hey, man, if you go out on a business meeting, they said, do not ever let the other person buy the meal for you. Do not ever let the other person buy the meal. If, I used to work in doing contracts and, and doing negotiations. And they would tell me, do not ever let the person that you're dealing with, do not ever let them buy lunch for you. You always buy the lunch. You always pay, pay for the lunch. The company will reimburse you. Don't ever let them buy the lunch. Because what happens is, is naturally, we sit there and we have this thing that we're indebted to them. If they buy the lunch that we're naturally indebted to them, so then we begin to work out contracts and we sit there and we begin to be easier on them. We begin to sit there and give them a little more than we should because we feel indebted to them. How many know that sometimes people help us out in life and we feel indebted to them? I don't know about you, but somebody goes and fixes your car, amen, and goes and does a, something to help you out. You need help moving, amen. You go and move your stuff, and all of a sudden, you feel indebted to them, and they're like, hey, can you help me with this? And you're like, yeah, I'll be right there. Hey, can you help me with this? Yeah, I'll be right there. Hey, can you help me with this? Yeah, I'll be right there. No matter what they say, you're like, yeah, I'll be right there, because you still feel indebted, even though you may have paid it back already. But you're so indebted because they first reached out to you. Amen. Can we live like that for Jesus Christ? Oh, no. Do we understand that he first reached out to us before we ever laid down our life for him? We didn't come into the house of God saying, oh, you know, I'm just coming here because I want to lay down my life. I don't know about you. Amen. I didn't come from the streets a drunk. Amen. Doing drugs, partying, living crazy. I didn't come into the house of God saying, you know what? I just want to come in here and lay down my life for this guy. You know, I'm coming in church today because I'm going to lay down my life. I didn't think like that. I came into the house of God because I wanted something. I wanted something. I was like, man, Lord, I need you to restore my family. Man, Lord, <laughs> I came into the house of God because I, I was like, man, Lord, I don't want you to take my family, amen? I'm just going to come in here. It wasn't even about God. I was like, I'm just coming to the house of God because my wife says she's going to take my family if I don't show up. So I'm here. Praise God. I'm going to do my time. That was the mentality that I had. But how many know when we get to the house of God and we begin to worship God, we begin to get saved, we begin to learn who he is, we should have that gratitude to him. Say, man, Lord, you laid down your life ever before I even did anything for you. Even before I came on earth, you had already laid down your life for me. How could I ever repay you for that? How could I ever give back to you for that? How could I ever come out of debt for that? He's done far more than we could ever do for him. We must always have that gratitude of thankfulness. That we are always thankful and grateful for the things that he's done within our lives. 
But I see some men in the Bible, praise God. I ain't talking about anybody in the church. People get all crazy on me, amen? Pastor, I know you're talking about me. I mean, these are guys from the Bible, praise God. But I see some men that were followers of Christ. But they decided to pick their lives back up. The first example is Judas. How many know Judas was a man that was walking with Jesus? Judas was a man that was there with Jesus. Judas was a man that sat there and he shared with Jesus. Jesus was there. He taught him. He trained him. He worked with him. He even ate with him. Judas was there, but he had a different mentality. He couldn't allow his mentality to switch. He had a mentality that he wanted to get ahead. He had his own agenda. He had his own plan. He had his own idea of how things are supposed to work out. He had his own mentality of, oh, if he's the Messiah, if he's the Savior, then he's going to be the one that starts the war. He had a mentality of how Jesus was and how Jesus was supposed to be and how Jesus was supposed to treat him and how Jesus was supposed to react to everything. He had a mentality. He's like, Jesus, this is the one that's going to lead the battle. He's the one that's going to lead the war. Judas had a different mentality. He had his own ideas and his own plans of how things were going to work out. So in the end, what happens is, is Judas sits there, and he made some moves in order to fulfill what he thought was the best plan. He sat there and had some little side meetings. He sat there and had some little side talks. He was able to get what he wanted. Amen. He got the finances he wanted. He got what he wanted, and he was there, and he turned Jesus over to the Pharisees. And he sat there, and he went down that road to where he faded away, where he ended up taking his own life. He never even got what he planned. He got what was worse. I see Judas, and there he is, and he was one that walked with Jesus. Here's another one that I see. I also see Nicholas. When you read in your Bibles and Acts, it talks about the first, the first seven leaders or the first seven deacons in, Jeru- in the Jerusalem church. Nicholas was one of them. But Nicholas had something going on within his life. He had his own idea and his own mentality also. His lust of the flesh gave, his, gave way to him teaching. The spiritual liberty gave them, that a spiritual liberty gave them the freedom to worship idols. That spiritual liberty gave them the free the freeway, gave them the leeway to practice immorality. Well, Pastor, how do you know this? Nicholas, you read it in Acts. The very beginning of Acts, when they're sitting there and they pray over Stephen and, and Nicholas is included with them. They go and they pray for him and they're like, man, these are the leaders that are rising up. But then when you read Revelation, something changes and something takes place. There's a person in there that Jesus sits there and says, you know what, I hate their ways. We can turn there if you want, Revelation chapter 2. I think it's verse 6. Jesus spoke very harshly of the Nicolaitans. He says, but you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He's sitting there talking about this Nicholas that was once a leader in the Jerusalem church. He even goes in on verse 13. He begins to talk about it again. He says, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness that he was a martyr. That was the wrong one, amen? It was a little further. In verse 15, likewise, you also have those who hold the teachings of the Nicolaitans. He says, repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. This is the same guy that was a leader and a deacon in the Jerusalem church. 
And Jesus says, hey, their teachings and their ways, I'm going to come fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He says, I'm not for them, I'm against them. I'm going to fight against them. For all those that believe, once saved, always saved, it ain't true. Amen. If Nicholas was in the church, if Nicholas was a leader in the church, and Jesus says, hey, I'm going to come fight against you. I'm going to come with my sword in my mouth because what you're teaching is wrong. I hate the ways that you're teaching. It shows us that it's wrong. We can't live that way. We can't have this spiritual liberty that the world wants to tell us about today. Do you know? I just saw this and it breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. But we have like one of the biggest pastors was just asked to resign from his church. One of the biggest pastors was just asked to resign for his, from his church because of some things that were going on. You know how bad that is? But we live in a society today where we, we believe that we have the spiritual liberty, that we can do whatever we want and God doesn't care. We can live however we want. I can go to the club and I can go to the bar and I can go do this and I can hook up with this person and that person and the Lord doesn't care. He doesn't mind. It's okay with him. As long as I say that I love Jesus, he's okay with it. But I sit there and I'm like, man... I see, I see a difference here. I see the disciples that were thankful. They were grateful for what God had done in their life. But then you look at these two men, and you begin to see in their lives that they were thankless. They didn't care one bit what God had done for them. They only cared about their idea and their agenda. I look at Nicholas, and I see a perfect example of a man that once followed God. And turn from the Lord to follow his own understanding and being hated by the Lord. For all those that are like, oh, you can do whatever you want. We still get them. Don't worry. Praise God. Even on YouTube, people don't like the way we teach and the way we preach. And I don't know. God just accepts you as the way you are. Yes, he accepts you that way, but he doesn't leave you the same. Man. Man. He didn't sit there and say, hey, Peter, come follow me. You're a fisherman now, but I'm going to leave you a fisherman. Whoa. Fishing for fish. He said, no, you're a fisherman, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Hallelujah. You're not going to be the same anymore. Matthew was a tax collector. But he wasn't a tax collector anymore. He began to follow Christ and he began to live his life for Christ. He was willing to die for Christ. I don't know about you, but we can't continue to live our lives the way that we continue to live them and think everything's okay. I know you're here on a Wednesday, so I'm not really preaching to you. I'm preaching to those that aren't on YouTube. Amen? On Facebook. Praise God. But we must live our lives. I truly believe this, Victor Average Greeley. You want to see a third wave of revival that takes place? You want to see a third wave of revival take place within our city, within our state, within the world? We really need to get to a place where we become radical like the disciples were in the very beginning. Where we're like, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to live for you. I'm going to live my life sold out for you. I'm not going to have no hangups. I'm not going to have no things that tear me down. I'm not going to have no things that destroy me. Oh, if Paul could go through it, then I can go through it. If Paul could be slapped, then I could be slapped. Paul, if Paul, well, lost a whole lot of amens there. Ain't nobody slapping me. Ain't nobody going to talk bad to me. Oh, you come talk like that to me, then, then I'm going to have to talk back. There's a shirt out there. Um, saved, but not soft. Praise God. There's a shirt out there. It's a pretty popular shirt. I'm saved, but I'm not soft. Don't be coming at me like that. I'll still tear you up. I still got the world in me, amen? I'm saved, but I still got the world in me. We'll, still, we'll, we'll start throwing hands again, amen? That's what this society believes nowadays. That we can still act like we used to act. That we can still live like we used to live. We can still carry the same mentality that we used to carry. That we can be stuck in our bondage. We can be stuck in our Egypt. And we can continue going forward and God's okay with it. God truly wants to do a work within our lives. I think about that song as the worship team comes. The song that they were singing. How many of us are willing to Give ourselves away. 
have one amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but there ain't no, um, who's rich, Kanye West? Amen. There ain't no Kanye West up in here. Praise God. Who's that other guy? Who's the one that makes Tesla? Oh, yeah, Elon Musk. I don't see no Elon Musk up in here. Amen. Making Tesla and sending spaceships up to outer space. Amen. I really think about this like, man, if you had a lot, if you had everything, it might be hard to lay it down. I still truly believe this, church. I heard a prophecy one time. This will be the greatest move of God that this generation has seen in a while. I once seen a prophecy that Bill Gates was going to turn all of his money over to the church. How many know Bill Gates is an atheist? He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. But this prophet said that he was going to sit there and he was going to be the financial backbone for the church. And I don't even care what church it is. Amen? How many know if you've seen a man like Bill Gates that had everything, if you've seen him turn it all over to the church, you would know that it had to be the power of God. You would know that it had to be the power of God. And you may be thinking... He's probably going to do it when he's on his deathbed and he ain't got nothing to lose. But I truly believe the Lord is great and I believe the Lord is mighty. I believe God's going to move in his heart and this prophecy will be fulfilled when he has everything to lose. Why? So God can get the honor, so God can get the glory. It's easy to lay your life down when you don't have nothing. When everybody's given up on you, that's usually when we come to the house of God. Everybody's given up on you. Nobody has no hope in you. Your family doesn't want to help you no more. Your loved ones don't want you around no more. You've done spent all your money on drugs. You're stuck in bondage. You're stuck in addiction. You ain't got nowhere to go. Your life is at the very, at the rock bottom. The only place further down is a grave. There's a lot of times we come to the house of God like that. In that very same situation, that's where I came to the house of God. I came to the house of God when I was losing everything. It was easy to sit there and say, you know what, Lord? I give myself away. I'm going to lay my life down for you because I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything. But then the Lord begins to bless you and begins to give back to you, begins to give you jobs and begins to give you positions and begins to give you a house, begins to give you a family. He begins to give you different things within your life. And all of a sudden we forget. We forget that moment when we first came to Christ and we were saying, Lord, I'll lay my life down for you. We sit there and we begin to say, you know what, I ain't got time for this. You don't understand, Pastor. My kids are homeschooled right now. They're online learning. They drove me up the wall. They give me a headache. I can't make it to church because I got a headache. Oh, well, how's that work? You guys ain't got no excuse. Oh, I go to work and I'm tired. I go to work and I'm tired, Pastor. I can't I can't come to church. You know, I have a brother that graduated the home that got a job at JBS. Praise God. Amen. How many know JBS ain't an easy job? That brother goes to work every day. You're like, Pastor, he doesn't call off? No, he goes to work every day. He goes to work every day. Ten hours? Eight hours? Eight? 
I can't say that far. Eight, he goes to work for eight hours every single day. Except for his job's a little messed up because they hold him for overtime sometimes. Like the other morning, he didn't get home till 10 in the morning. He was supposed to get off, and he was supposed to get off at 6, and he didn't get off till 10 in the morning. He did a 12-hour shift, but he works every single day. You know, if he wants a day off, he's got to request a day off. He has to put in. He's had one day off in the last month. I'm guessing about a month he's been working. He's had one day off in the last month. But never once has he called me and said, Hey, Pastor, I'm tired. I ain't going to make it to church today. You know, I've been working 20 days straight, and I just don't think I can make it today. Never once has he sat there and said, You know, I'm not going to be able to make it. Did you know? For all those that, Oh, Pastor, I'm tired. I can't make it to church. Do you know he works graveyard? Every Sunday morning, if he doesn't work overtime, he gets off at 6 a.m. He goes in at 10 at night, and he gets off at 6 a.m. He goes home. He might little. He might be able to shower a little bit, eat some breakfast. He comes right back to the church. Is here by 8 o'clock in the morning. No excuses. 8 o'clock in the morning, comes over here. Think about this for a second. Think about this. Really, really think about this. He gets off at 6 in the morning, comes back over here at 8. He's here at 8. He begins to set things up. How many know you wouldn't even read the words on the screen if it wasn't for him? He doesn't come to the house because he's like, man, I just need to come to the house because I need to receive, man. I'm so tired and beat up and tore down and, and rejected. He comes to the house of God every single service, even when he's tired, to go sit in a booth so he can serve. I just need to receive today, Pastor. Oh, you don't know the day that I've had. You don't know the week that I've had and how tired I am and how beat up I am. I just need to receive today, Pastor. Next time you think about that, why don't you think about the guy behind the booth that's been back there for... I think he's been back there since it's been built, since we put stuff back there, amen? Since we put the computers back there, he's been back there. If he wasn't back there, he was back there. Never once, not even in the sanctuary receiving. Pastor, I just need to make an altar call. He's learned the discipline of making an altar call right where he's at. He's learned the discipline of making an altar call before he even gets to church. I think about that. I'm like, man, sometimes we come in here with all these excuses and all these ideas. When are we going to come in here and just begin to lay our lives down? Be like, you know what, Lord? I don't care what I went through this week. I'm like, Paul, I don't care what I went through this week. I don't care what I went through today, Lord God. I just want to come in your house. I want to worship you. I want to praise you. I want to serve you. I want to live for you, Lord God. I want to give my life to you, Lord God. Whatever you want to do with it, Lord God, that you would be able to have your way, Lord God. If you could use anything, Lord God, that you could use me, Lord God. You could use my life, Lord God, that you can use me, Father God, to be able to reach a dying and hurting world. I don't want to give up, Lord God. I don't want to break, Lord God. I want to continue moving forward in you. As we all stand this evening. I don't know where you're at. This Christian walk that we live, it ain't about us. This Christian walk that we live, it ain't about us and what we can receive and what we can get out of it and how we can live our lives and how God can bless us and how he's going to fatten our pockets and how he's going to make us feel good and how he's going to do things. But this Christian walk is about being thankful for everything you already have. Being thankful for the opportunity to serve him. Being thankful for the opportunity to wake up in the morning. Being thankful for the opportunity to come into the house of God. Man, Lord, where can you use me today? Where could you use my life today? Where can I sit there and be used by you, even if it's in my seat, lifting my hands, praising and worshiping you? If you're not scheduled to do anything, then you should be in the sanctuary, lifting your hands, saying, Lord, I'm so grateful and thankful. Use me right here in my seat that people would be able to see me, Lord God. Live a thankful life, Lord. Live a grateful life, Lord. That I would never hold nothing back from you. How dare us ever hold anything back from God? 
The disciples that went before us, they never held anything back. They all laid down their lives for him or were in prison for him. Follow me as I follow Christ, they said. Follow me, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Who are you following? Are you following Paul? Or are you following T.D. Jakes? You following Paul? Or are you following Pastor Mario? Are you following Paul? Or are you following Pastor Stephen Furtick? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He laid the groundwork. He was there. He laid down his life. Church, I pray. I pray we have a different heart. I pray that we have a more grateful and thankful heart. I pray that we have a different attitude. I pray that God would give us a different mentality. I pray that God would shape and mold our mentality and he would begin to shape and mold the way we see things. And we'd be able to come here next Wednesday on a testimony night, on a night where we're able to give thanks to God, where we don't have to sit there and beg for people to come up. But we have men and women that are thankful and grateful to God and they want to testify of what God's done in their life and how he's seen them through. Have your way in this place, Lord. We're going to sing this song one time. Sing it with us. Hallelujah, Lord. Right before the altar call. Just lift your hands. If you're on YouTube, lift your hands. Stand up, lift your hands. I give myself away so you can use me. Take my life as a living I give myself away so you can use me Lord I don't know I don't know how many men and women today in today's culture want to truly be used by God It's not about my life, Lord God. I just want to be used by you. I just, I'll give everything away, Lord. I just want to be used by you. Whatever purpose you have, Lord God, you've been so good to me, Lord. Whatever purpose you have, I just want to be used. We're going to open up the altars. We're going to continue to sing this song. Maybe that's you this evening. You just want to, maybe you want to repent. Maybe you want to come up and just tell God how thankful you are, how grateful you are for the things that he's done in your life. 
not even just for the things that he's done in your life but how he laid down his life for your life have your way Lord God God. We belong to you, Lord. You paid a price for our life, and we cannot pay, Lord God. This life isn't ours, but it's yours, Lord. you could use us as an instrument in your hand, Lord God, as a war club in your hand, Lord God. Use us tonight, Lord God. Use our lives, Lord God, in this generation today, Lord God. I want you to think about something for a second. Brother Monty, go ahead and flip it to that blemish sacrifice. There's a part in there. I want you to really think about this. It says, take my heart. Take my life as a living sacrifice. How many know that back in the Old Testament, that God, they would sit there and they would give a living sacrifice to God. They would give a sacrifice to God. They would take the best of the best and they would give it to God. Move on to the next part. The blemish part. I don't know what part that is. He's talking about that living sacrifice. Take my life as a living sacrifice. And there's a part in there. Praise God. You know the words? Yeah. The blemish part. Amen. But think about this. Amen. Living sacrifice. Praise God. But think about this. When they went to go present their sacrifices before God, when the Israelites were there, how many know that they used to get in trouble if they would take a blemish sacrifice before God? If they began to take a sacrifice to God that was blemished, that was crippled, that was lame, that there was anything wrong with it, if it had a defect, if they took that sacrifice to God, God would sit there and look at them and say, how dare you bring me this? Now, I don't know about you. 
It says, take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What happens when we come to God and we bring him our heart and it's blemished? Your heart is of the world. Your heart is of finances and building up stature and building this and building that. Your heart's after the wrong thing. Amen? How many know sometimes our heart is in the wrong direction? We spend more time with our hearts focused on relationship than we do on a relationship with God. Take my life. Take my heart, Lord God. The life that I'm living, the testimony that I'm living as a living sacrifice without blemish. Church, we have it all backwards. How could we ever come up to the altar and say, Lord, I want you to take my heart, I want you to take my life as a sacrifice, but then we come and give them our worst. We hold things in our back pocket. We're like, I don't want to give that up. Let me hide this over here. It's like Christians that come into the house of God. And we sit there and we have $100 in our pocket. And before service starts, we take that dollar out and we pull it out of our wallet. And we come and place it in our pocket before we come in the doors of the church. That way when it comes time for tithes and offering, we, we can look all cool and walk in and be like, reach in our pocket where our wallet is, bring out our buck, throw it in there, be like, all right, Lord, praise God. Nobody knows that I have the hundred sitting in my wallet. We come in here with our hearts so messed up sometimes, our lives so messed up sometimes. Do we even come to the altar and ask God to forgive us? Or we just come into the church and think everything's okay? We don't even come into the church and ask God for forgiveness. We begin to praise Him and worship Him. We begin to listen to His Word. We haven't even asked for forgiveness yet. There's got to be a change in our mentalities and a change in our hearts. I say this, and I don't take this lightly, church. I say the sinner's prayer every single day. I ask God for forgiveness of any sins that I, that I don't even know about. I'm like, Lord, if I did anything to offend you, please forgive me. Lord, if I did anything wrong, please forgive me. Lord, I know that I cut this person off. Please forgive me. Ask for forgiveness then and ask for forgiveness later. I think back on my day and I'm like, man, if I talk to this person wrong, please forgive me. I don't want to come in and give God my sacrifice. Oh, Lord, take my life as a sacrifice, but then it's all beat up and tore down and it ain't worth nothing. I want to give God my best. I want to give God my all. We're going to sing this one more time. If you have a reason to repent, repent right now. Ask God to forgive you. That doesn't mean you get to go back out and go back to the way you were living. If you plan on going back to the way you were living, don't repent. If you plan on leaving here and going and getting drunk, don't repent. If you plan on leaving here and going and shooting up, don't repent. But if you really feel in your heart right now, you're like, man, Lord, please forgive me of today, Lord God. Please forgive me of the things I did. Please forgive me of my actions. Please forgive me of this. Please forgive me of that. Here's my laundry list, Lord God, of all the things I know I did wrong that I want you to forgive me of. Then this is your time right now. We're going to sing that one more time. And now is your time where you can ask God to forgive you. Lord, we pray that you forgive us tonight, Lord God. Lord, forgive us for all of our areas, Lord God, where we fall short, Lord God. That you would search, Lord God, the causes of our heart, Lord God, to bring forth, Lord God, the things that we do, Father God, to sin against you, Lord God. That we would be able, Father God, to get right before you, Lord God, to live a life, Lord God, that honors and glorifies you, Lord God. That our testimony, Lord God, we'd be able, Father God, to bring honor and glory to your name, honor and glory to your kingdom, Lord God have your way within our lives, Lord God. We want to be used by you, Lord God. We want to come before you, Lord God, as a testimony and a witness, Lord God, a life that is pure, Lord God, that you can use, Lord God, to reach this city, Lord God, to reach our families and our friends, to reach the world, Lord God. Have your way within our lives, Lord.
know God's speaking this message to each and every single one of us because he doesn't want none of us to be lost. There's Bible scripture. There's a Bible scripture that's pretty heavy and it says if you honor God, he'll honor you. But if you despise him, he'll despise you. You know, this, this gift that God gave us, it wasn't, it's not just, it's not for we can live our own lives and, and do what we will. You know, God came to rescue us and we either accept his gift and we're either grateful and, and, and measure the cost that it cost him to lay his, his life down for us, to set us free from a death sentence that none of us could pay on our own. We either accept that gift or we reject it. And in rejecting that gift and living a life that, living a life of our own, then that's, that's rejecting reconciliation with God. And God, and I, and I believe this message is to, to warn us to measure the cost, to measure the price, and to measure the gift, and to be grateful for what He's done in our life, that He set us free, not, not to live the way we want to live, but to bring honor and glory to His name, so we can also share that gift with others that are stuck in bondage, to share that gift with other people that are going to hell and that don't know of this gift. Who are we to, who are we to spit in the face of God and be ungrateful? for what he's done in our lives to set us free by shedding his blood on the cross and being tortured who are we to disrespect God and bring dishonor to his name for he is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords for he is the one that spoke us all here to existence you know, just think about the words tonight evaluate reevaluate your heart and think about everything that none of us should even be here none of us should even be in this church those men in the bible that laid the foundation that laid down their lives so we can have scripture so we can have the bible in our hands you know that we have this word and it's sitting at a coffee table you know we allow it to collect dust you know people people have laid down their lives just so we can have this word especially here in the united states so we can worship and come to his house freely and and worship them and you know it's shouldn't take that gift lightly we shouldn't take that gift and be ungrateful you know men and women lay down their lives so we can be here pastor mario and sister diana lay down their lives so we can be here Amen. pastor sonny and sister julie lay down their lives so people like us can be here so measure the cost and don't don't take it lightly for it was for it was paid with the heavy cost and the came with a heavy price and a heavy burden it's right there just lift your hands as we close out in a word of prayer father god we come before you lord in the name of jesus god we thank you lord for everything that you're doing in our lives god we thank you lord for for allowing us to be here in your house god to have your word to be able to speak to us god and for even having breath today god and it not being too late to turn back and have a grateful heart towards you lord I pray, God, that all of us, God, would, would not leave this place the same, God, and that, that we would count the cost of everything that you've done, Lord, for laying down your life, for setting us free, God, and just continue to, continuing to grow us, God, and speak to us, Lord. For if you didn't want it, Lord, you didn't, even, you didn't even have to speak to us and warn us, God. You can, you can just let us go our own way and let that be the consequences of our action. But you love us so much, God, that you still speak to us and you still warn us and you still bring us here, Lord. I pray that you would be with, that you would be with all your saints here tonight, God, and that you would give them traveling mercies, God, and that the seed and that the word that was planted here tonight would not be stolen from their hearts or their minds, God, and just protect their hearts, their minds, and their ears, God, and that they would be planted in, planted in your word and be unmovable and that they would not be shaken by the things of this world, but that you would use us to shake the world, Lord, by our faith in you, Lord Jesus, that we would stand firm in, in who you are and who you called us to be, Lord, and that we would live a life that's, that's, that brings honor and glory to your name, Lord. You know, we thank and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, and the body of Christ says, Amen. Amen. Give Jesus Christ a radical hand of praise. You know, the, the, the,